so that we can realign some of our infrastructure money to strengthen programs that promote human capital formation. The Pantawid Familia Program of Conditional Cash Transfers, Measures to Optimize Market Opportunities from JPEPA, Scholarships, Palay Procurement, and Field Health. That is why I welcome the proposal that was given to me uh, on the platform today by Donald uh, while Ed was making his speech that uh, perhaps we should have a 100 billion peso fund, uh, private, public, 50 billion from the GFIs and 50 billion from the private banks and financial institutions. We have Peter Fabila here, head of NBC. Uh, Ray David of BBP has already said yes to Donald. Donald is a member of the board of SSS. And we hope the private banking sector will join in this. And that way, we can put our money in human capital formation, which will provide direct income and services to the poor during the coming period. We will strengthen financial sector supervision. We have asked Congressman Joseph Violago to file a bill to increase deposit insurance from 250,000 pesos to 1 million pesos. We now look at how we can safeguard our workers amidst the global storm. As a starting point, the Dole Philippine Overseas Labor Office reports that so far, there has been no displacement of expatriates related to the financial crisis. The employment of the 2 million expats in the Middle East remains secure. The employment of 500,000 expats in Europe is also secure and stable so far. And aside from the booming Middle East market, overseas employment opportunities are emerging in other expatriate markets. Canada, 30,000 in the next two years. Australia, another 30,000. New Zealand, 10,000 in the next two years. And Guam, 20,000 starting 2010, when the base in Okinawa begins to move to Guam. Nonetheless, what is our contingency agenda for expatriates? 24 by 7 heightened monitoring of overseas labor market displacements. Monitoring of job orders for any decrease in overseas labor demand. We will register our workers so we can keep track of them. And we will redeploy them to emerging labor markets. We continue to identify and develop, develop new market niches, and we assist in repatriation. For returning expatriates, should there be, we will have constant monitoring of job orders of foreign principals. We will have them expand their livelihood and business formation program with a 250 million livelihood fund through NLSF and the Reintegration Center, which has business counseling, and we will strengthen the reintegration services. We are also, as I said, registering workers who will be displaced. So we, need a ma we will need, if there should be a recession in the U.S., a massive skills upgrading and retooling service. And we will continue to facilitate the mobilization of expatriates, but all of this needs strengthened partnership with you, the private sector. Your theme says one global Filipino, which has been your theme. In addition, you say, sustaining growth, and that's a challenge. But I'm glad you're going beyond the challenge 
sustaining growth, and surging ahead. For indeed, for the fiscally strong, the global credit crunch can be an opportunity rather than a crisis. On the part of countries, to the likes of the oil-producing countries, for instance, and other fiscally strong economies, this is the time to fill the financial vacuum. Similarly, in the private sector, your world, this is the time for business groups to take advantage of the strength and financial liquidity of our banking system to expand your role in your respective markets. Equally important to financial strength is the ability to decide and move quickly. The road between a decision to invest and the actual writing of the check is fraught with uncertainty. On the part of countries, the Middle East powers are the bastions of wealth with both financial capacity and decisiveness. They have oil and they have governments with unified commands. On the part of business, therefore, I call on you to also decide, be decisive, and avail, or not just avail, seize the opportunities provided by the closeness of the Middle East to Mindanao and to our Filipino workers. I hope you will send a delegation to our Middle East trip, which we will be doing before Christmas. Because if we're going to be one Filipino, we should work together. Let us work together to bring economic opportunities and human dignity to our people during this special holiday of season, and uh, this special holiday season of hope, love, and faith. Because Christmas is just around the corner. We're already seeing the Christmas lanterns being sold in the streets. So this early, may I not just congratulate you on this conference, but also wish you a Merry Christmas and a New Year wherein we will continue our growth and surge ahead. Congratulations and thank you. Maraming 